And Allah says, today I have perfected your religion for you and have completed my blessings upon you and chosen Islam as a deen or religion, a way of life for you. But whoever is compelled by extreme hunger, having no inclination towards sin, then Allah is most forgiving and merciful. Again, today I have perfected your religion for you. And when the Prophet Islam, when this ayat was revealed to the Prophet Islam in the Arafat over 1400 years ago, it, it, it established the fact that Islam was the seal. It was it. The last prophecy to be revealed. But it also, for Muslims, it showed us, you know, that we have a great responsibility. You know, just like we have, again, the Islam, it's not just another religion. And again, it's not just about the external. It's not just about what we wear or how we smell or what we do. It's, it's again, it's about changing character. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he only came to change our characters, to change our character. Because when the people who have been dealing with the Arabs for hundreds of years, and all of a sudden they saw some type of significant change in the way they were dealing with one another and the, how they were dealing with other people, what happened, the, the Islam became very, very attractive to them, to the point that it has been spread far and wide. And so we're in this land, this land of many people who are not yet Muslims. I don't say non-Muslim, just not yet Muslims. But based on the, the way we're acting, it will determine whether people are attracted to this deen. We know that Allah makes Muslims. Allah makes Muslims. But Allah will prepare somebody, prepare the heart, just like when, again, you're cultivating the soil and you're fertilizing it and you're turning it over. So some people, they're, they're right for Islam. I meet people all the time in the work that I do and they, they ask them about their religion. They say, well, I, 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 I don't have a religion. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. And you'll find the research is showing that that's the fastest growing religion in this country right now. No religion. They're not saying they're atheists. They're saying they're spiritual. But we have to tailor the dawah for the spiritual. We have to tailor the dawah for the, the people who are, you know, following the, the, the way of Isa, alayhi salam, and the, and the, and the tailor the dawah to follow the, the, the followers who are of Musa, alayhi salam. And we have to also tailor the dawah to the people who just don't believe. I remember meeting an atheist one time, and I said, oh, he was at a dawah. He, Allah must have wanted him to do something, or to learn something about this deed. And he said, well, I'm an atheist. I'm from Serbia. And I told him, man, you're half Muslim, man. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, the atheists say there is no God, and the Muslims say there is no God but God. There's the negation, and then there's the affirmation. And so we have to tell of the dawah, and not just treat it's our deed as a secret club, as a private club. We have to spread this way, way far and wide because we are being tested. We're tested with this, this famine in the land. We're tested with the plague in the land. You see floods in, in all parts of the world. You're seeing fires. We're being tested and we're sitting here, you know, like it don't mean anything. But Allah has given us all kinds of signs. And so we're in these days when you see the people walking around as if naked. And, and all of this was, was predicted by the Prophet, peace be upon him. All of it was predicted. But he also said that Islam began as something strange and it will end as something strange. And he sent his tidings, sent his salams to the strange. We're the strange. Because we don't engage in certain things. We don't engage in the intoxicants. We don't engage in, in the promiscuity. We don't engage in the nakedness. We don't engage in the dishonesty. As Muslims, if we're practicing this way of life, we are either receiving dawah or we're giving dawah. So based on our actions, based on our behaviors, as the Prophet Wasallam said, your deen is on your friends. Who are your closest associates? Are your closest associates those who pray with the A? Or are your closest associates those who pray with the E? So we have to be of those to have people around us that will tell us what we need to hear, not what we want to hear. We have a perfected religion, the perfected religion. Allah says, this day I have perfected your religion and given you Islam as a way of life. A way of life because, again, deen does not necessarily mean religion. It means way of life, and we have to practice it as a complete way of life, brothers and sisters. And Allah gives us these talks. He gives us these eads as a reminder. This is a reminder. 
narrated Tariq bin Shahab, a Jew, said to Umar, Ridilahu Anhu, O chief of the believers, if this verse, this day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favors upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion, had been revealed upon us, we would have taken that day as an Eid or a festival day. Umar said, I know definitely on what day this verse was revealed. It was revealed on the day of Arafah, on a Friday. And alhamdulillah, even to this day, we honor the, 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 the fact that Islam was perfected on that day. We have to be of those who honor it in such a way that we're forgiving of one another. If I ever sinned or basically um, caused some harm to anybody spiritually or materially or any way, then I ask Allah to forgive me and I ask you to forgive me. And I want you to be forgiving of one another. If you've caused any harm, spiritual or otherwise, to one another, ask for forgiveness. Ask Allah to, to forgive you. And, and may Allah forgive all of us. And may Allah allow us to be the best Muslims that we could possibly be. Narrated al Barra. I heard the Prophet وسلم, delivering a kupa saying the first thing to be done on this day of, of Eid, the first day of Eid al-Adha, is, is to pray. And after returning from prayer, we slaughter. I was sacrificed in the name of Allah. And whoever, whoever does so, he's acting according to our sunnah, to our traditions. And again, it was on Arafat, 1400 years ago, that we received these marching orders. Again, that is, Islam is not just a religion, it's a, it's a perfected religion and a complete way of life. And that's how we have to view it. You know, and again, the Quran, the last testament, the Prophet Wasallam is the last prophet. And Islam is the last chance for man to get it right. Last chance for man to get it right. We have to be of those who are sincere about this deen. Because, you know, the, the Prophet Wasallam said the, the deen is sincerity. You know, we can't be what I always talk about the PTMs. What we used to talk about in Philly. Oh, he a PTM. She a PTM. Part-time Muslim. You got to be 24-7, 365 Muslim brothers and sisters. You have to be about it. And be assertive in your Islam. Don't, you know, be incognito and hide in your deen. Be of those who are basically able to show the people by your dress and also by the character. By the fact that you're engaged in honesty. By the, by the fact that you don't get involved in all of the, 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 the tempting activities in this society. We resist to exist, brothers and sisters. We resist to exist. And that's why we have the Ramadan. That's why we fast, you know, during the week, especially during the year. We, that fasting teaches us self-restraint. If you haven't been fasting outside of Ramadan, that's something, a practice that you may want to pick up, inshallah. These are some of the things that we have to look at, brothers and sisters, because Islam is the last chance, again, for mankind to get it right. Because all of the previous prophets, they came to different people. Some prophets had no followers. Some prophets had lots of followers. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will have the greatest number of followers. You know, so this, he was the seal of the prophet, and we have to act like it. And we have to emulate him in any way possible. And again, not just how he dressed, but also his character. He talked about family. He says that, again, the best of you are those who are the best to their families, and I am the best to you because I am the best to my families. How are we treating our families? If we have any issues with your parents, if you have any issues with your children, this is the time to basically resolve them, resolve those things. You know, forgive one another. Because if you look at how Allah says, if you, if you bring a mountain of sins to him and you, and, and, and you ask for forgiveness, he will forgive you. But you know, we'll have a, a thimble full of, 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 of resentments and we won't forgive a person. So it's about being forgiving. Because for Allah is all forgiving and most merciful. Narrated Hamam, who they for Allah and who said, O the group of Al Qaeda, follow the straight path. For you have taken a great lead and, and will be the leaders. But if you divert right or left, then you will go astray, far away. You'll go astray, far away. If I've said anything that's inconsistent with what Allah has given us, I take responsibility for that. And if I've said anything in which you have gained some new insight, as always, all praise is due to Allah. La ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la sharika la lahu muqa la wuham wa huwa Allah kulli shayil qadir. We verily sent our messengers with clear proofs and revealed with them the scriptures and the balance, the authority to establish justice, 
that mankind may observe justice and right measure. And again, that's our role as Muslims to establish justice. As Muslims, you know, we, we want to grow in Islam. We don't want to allow our actions or the old actions that we come into Islam with to pull us down. They can, they can become like weight. They can become like a weighty anvil, you know, on our, on our souls. And so we want to basically allow our hearts to be cleaned by Islam because Islam is a major cleanser. And again, these are some of the things that we have to do. And again, I, as I mentioned earlier, may we be forgiven for any sins that we have committed over the past year and may we work to minimize and minimize any actions that may be tempted us into engaging in sins in the future. Again, let us be of those who are most forgiving. Again, because the Muslims, as the law says, Muslims are those who when we give, give them power in the land, establish the system of prayer and zakat and enjoying virtue and forbid vice and evil. And again, these are not just empty words. We can't be of the Muslims who are known as those who are doing wrong. We, again, want to be of the Muslims who are trying to become mu'min. You know, because Muslims are those who just submit. Because just by you just breathing air, you're submitting. Just by you just basically walking around on the earth, respecting the gravity, you are basically submitting. But a mu'min is the one who believes, strives to be a believer. And that's what we want to try. We want to be of those who are, who are, the, are the believers. And again, this time of year, it's time to pay the zakat. The zakat is 2.5% of the nasab. The nasab, you can look online and see what it is. It's a certain amount, it's about three or $4,000 this year. And uh, you know, so if you haven't had that over the course of the Islamic year, this is the 12th month of the Islamic year. And so you know, if you haven't had that, you don't have to pay the zakat. If you've had that, you do the calculations, and Brother Jamal and Brother Kwame will be collecting the zakat you know, for our community on this year, inshallah. Rabbana la tu akidna inna sayna la tanna. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamautu wa ladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhamuna ma la tuqata la nabi wa kuwanna wa kfilina wa hanna. Anta maulana fansuna ahla al-kawmu kafirin. Our Lord, take us not to task if we forget or fall into error. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden such as you did lay on those who have gone before us. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden which we do not have the power to bear, and overlook our faults and forgive us and have mercy upon us. You are our guardian and grant us a victory against the unbelieving people. May Allah accept our dua. May Allah protect us from harm. May Allah allow us to be of those to be better. You know, again, there's a concept in business that nothing is ever perfect. And we have to take that attitude that we're never perfect. You know, we're striving, we have a perfect deen, but Muslims are mostly imperfect. We have a perfect deen, and we need to strive to, 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 we, to Allah extracts the, the souls from our bodies. We have to continue to strive for perfection and be the best people that we can possibly be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.